Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConnor Man at YouTube. Traditionally our hobby has been all about recreating a scene captured in time in a physical scale model. Previous generations have built subjects based off current conflicts and I intend to do the same today. The current war in Europe, I fully intend to recreate the Kharkiv tractor used to tow away Russian vehicles. As depicted on the news and online memes. At the time of production, such a model did not exist for mostly John Deere tractors. A lot of research went into this project learning about farming equipment, mass production or sale and decided to recreate it in Fusion 360 for resin printing and later on making it available through my hobby shop and downloading for anybody interested. This process was not very difficult as I overlaid an existing picture of the tractor and traced it, straightening it up a bit, followed by extruding the various shapes and going to greater detail in creating the appropriate detail and profiles, then scaling it and detailing it in the way that would be visibly seen and printable. I added a tad too much detail and took some liberties, borrowing a wheel from thing but made something that was quite believable and close in scale to 172nd that's suitable to many production model kits and 3D prints alike. This was scaled using dimensions found on Google and then using the scale model calculator to figure out its millimeter length and inputting that in slicing software for printing. Though this was all previously done with my model and it's at its appropriate 72nd size as is. With the mix of mesh and solid models, I use the combined function in Mesh Mixer to make a whole single piece. The first test was thrown into the Anycubic slicer for my Mono X, went for two tractors and downloaded an anti-aircraft tour piece for it to tow, found on Fingerverse as well. To my delight, all major components were manifold, supported pretty easily and completely printable. I did make it hollow to save as much resin as possible and the slices showed no irregularities. Absolutely excited and giddy, I pulled out the Mono X and mixed some stale resin for printing. There is nothing more exciting than working on a 3D model for a very long time on a computer plane and seeing it physically come out and holding it in your hand as a successful print straight off the bat. Between other tasks, I was absolutely glued to the preview of the printer and seeing what's underneath the bread until it concluded within two hours to something that was a very successful. General reminder of the hazards of resin 3D printing, a lot of fumes are given off and it is irritable to your skin. It's preferable to perform outside or a well ventilated area like a shed or garage such as my rig. I've wiped down excessive resin and using steel scraper pried the model off the bed and promptly clean down all the parts and flush the components with methylated spirits or isopropic alcohol. I did this in two parts and rinsed it under water allowing the resin to cure under daylight outside where supports and cleanup can occur. This all came about when I was meant to meet up with a friend in the city which got cancelled due to other circumstances. Doom scrolled social media and Wikipedia learning everything I could about Slavic farming equipment in the conflict and it was an absolute spontaneous whim to start drafting it after seeing another friend 3D printing his own tractor and a scratch built example on Facebook. Exaggerated stepping has been lessened by adjusting the X and Y axis by a few degrees. Project only consumed a couple of dollars in resin. Kharkiv is a region or city in eastern Ukraine which I've learnt a lot from a YouTube channel called Bald and Bankrupt where an English gentleman explores all sorts of unconventional holiday locations across eastern Europe, Asia, Eurasia, Balkans and South America. It is a YouTube channel highly worth checking out where he explores the region and the 
tractor factory in question, which was set up during the Soviet era and produced farming equipment for the Union. Before production ceased, they do have more modern variants of the tractor, but I went for the older one that I've seen in media pictures released. The model is dry to the touch from the cleaning regime, no stickiness or toxicity. Supports were very easy to tear off and the nubs removed with sanding and a knife. The underside also cured under natural sunlight. A hole was drilled in the rear. The thickness of the wall is only one mil, so it was very easy to drill and wire was super glued in place to attach self-propelled anti-aircraft platform. I really want to call it a tank, though I know some people will complain. Bulk automotive filler primer has been sprayed in a few layers to fill any Z-axis and faults, leaving to a smooth paintable finish. Digging through the collection of paints I have on hand, I found a couple of shades of light blue to base coat and shade up for a bit of colour gradient variation. The airbrush is a double action 0.5 by Ophir made in China on a 12 volt small compressor. Nothing fancy. At a low PSI and high viscosity with lots of thinner. All details were hand painted with lacquers, just colouring in the wheels and windows black, lightening up the roof and windows with white, and adding silver on top as a reflective base glass. It's no frills, nothing too fancy. The interesting and exciting aspect is weathering the sludge wash. I put in all of these panels and raised detail to capture as much definition as possible while weathering. It's especially the engine bay and wanted to see how much it would naturally flow and stick in when applied which gave a decent enough detail. It would scale up nicely anyway up to 35th scale. After 24 hours drying a matte clear was dusted on in a few coats to dull down as the Russian armor chosen is a 9K33 Tor, or known to NATO as the SA-15 Gauntlet, that has been reportedly hijacked and used. The reference picture at the start that I downloaded is a recorded example of what's occurred, though I'm going for a more what potentially has occurred. Not using the exact equipment, I think it's good to inspire that anyone is able to choose and pair any sort of tractor to what other vehicle they wish to model. I found the battery and radar very fascinating. Watched a couple of videos and saw the entire length of Soviet historical anti-aircraft platforms and there's just that many self-propelled uh, pieces I don't even think there's model kits or subjects of all of them unless you're going into the 3d printing realm this was a simple and straightforward download print clean up and paint but any excuse to paint a Z on the side of a Russian piece it's something I did really want to do without getting in trouble the tractor is an awesome conduit in modeling anything I want without flack Pun completely intended. I do have a interest in East Asian, Soviet and any socialist tank and armor subject matter and they all generally go with the same scheme. So for the North Korean project I mixed about 250 mil of custom paint and enlightened it for an early Soviet look to shade in between. This color combination is going to be seen a lot as I've got a lot more paint where that's come from and more commissions down the pipeline. It is saving me quite a bit of money and I like the color quite a bit. Going through mountains of reference material which look like they were photographed and filmed on a potato, I refer to more photos taken from older conflicts and museums where I got an idea of what the antenna would be painted like. It's transparent so I shaded it with white. Any sorts of light lenses like indicators and flashlights. The whole vehicle's painted green for camouflage. Any uh, numbers were removed and replaced with the Z. Our tank tracks painted with an oxidized steel. With basic weathering including sludge wash and pencil work, matte clear dusted across the entire piece. 
teams have begun really hard on these weekend quick builds to give a bit of filler between larger builds and tutorials. Uh, definitely a lot of fun and with this one being drafted from scratch paired with something I really wanted to build and paint on a whim. It was a bit of fun and I've learnt quite a lot from this process. Such as the Z marking is to prevent confusion as both sides are using similar equipment and where is staging from such as Far East for Z, X for Chechnya and all sorts of other markings in other areas that are allied to the cause. Again, not my best build, I just wanted to replicate what I saw and living through observing this from the internet and television as most other people are interested in doing similar. I will be releasing the model for free for anyone to download and do as they please if it's a club build, wargaming or a mass amount for people in your community. That is completely okay. I had some trouble with Thingiverse where they pulled it down so wherever I upload it I'll I'll maintain the link in the description section down below. Otherwise, very happy with the effort. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, until next time, stay tuned for further content, and catch you guys next time.